Okay, my outstanding friends, another day of trying to learn and understand. So what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to take this course at the University of Alberta. It's called Astro 101 Black Holes. It's free. You can enroll for free. It's, you know, you don't get any credit for it, like to say. But you, if, if all you want to do is learn, that's all I care about. Now, what is this thing going to do? What is a black hole? Do they really exist? How do they form? How are they related to stars? What would happen if you fell into one? How do you see a black hole if they emit no light? What's the difference between a black hole and a really dark star? Could a particle accelerator create a black hole? Can a black hole also be a wormhole or a time machine? And then they go through all kinds of things about what the current thinking of black holes is. Now, I am going to take this, and um, I'm going to try to interact and see if I can, uh, you know, have them look at my research and see what they think of the dark particles that I found, and the, the I believe, how the black hole does form, and the one that the Russians created in space. So, we're going to get into that very shortly. All right, this is how easy it is. Coursera. Nobody's paying me from Coursera or anything to talk about them in such a positive way, but they have been instrumental in my ability to understand what mainstream is saying versus what I'm saying. And I, I, I do this. I go for the full course, no certificate. I don't pay anything. You have access to everything, but you don't pay anything. If you pay $49, they'll give you a certificate. But regardless of what it is, you should get a book like this. Just get one of these and write, you know, I'm going to do the black holes or whatever it is. Or, you know, or just do sections. I put tabs on them. I, but anyway, that's what you should do. And then you can go and present that to a, a prospective employer. That you Here's what I did, and here's what my notes were, and here's what I wrote down, and here's what they talked about, and here's my understanding of this you know, summarize things, do it right. You know, I, I just sort of lay it in there because I don't really care about going to impress anybody at this point. But you should. You should do it right. If you're going to do it, do it right. All right, so anyway, all you have to do is hit continue and bang, you're in. That's it. It's two seconds. And it's free. No charge. All I did was hit start. Here it is. Welcome to the course. You are now you can now access the course materials. Start learning. Now this is the University of Alberta, but they're all over the world, and I mean all the ones that they've always said were the top universities. Now I have never had any success with any of them really relating to the things that I say, because I will almost always have a different interpretation of things than they do, which I had hoped that they would engage, but I have never really had that happen. Uh, as a matter of fact, I've had a, the total opposite of that in 100% of the places I went, and I went to a lot of them. So anyway, let's see, I'm going to start learning. Here we go. All right, so this, this is how simple it is. Welcome to week one. It was one click, and here it is, and then you go to the discussion. So I clicked on go to the discussion, and here's what comes up. Introduce yourself, and then the community guidelines, and so forth, and... Um, black hole fascination and da, da 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 and then there's all kinds of people that are making statements now i am going to make my statement about if they would look at my research and and comment so let's see if it, anything happens with that okay so i'm in the course this is what I'm asking. Hello, this is Roger. I study light and subatomic particles. The standard model does not work, but dipole flood theory does. This is the new atomic model where there are only muon and electron neutrinos, which are called Dirac's, and they make all matter. They are white and black, which create photons. The black muon can become sterile while the electron part creates showers. They should understand this. We can divide and see this event with CMOS as they are separated using a tuned Venturi. And then I link it to a video that I showed this. So now I'm going to post this and see if there is any response to that. Now I 
I believe it will let me put that in it did. So let's see what happened. I am a learner. And let's see if anybody uh, responds. But this is very good because now I'm going to go and see what they say. What is their idea of how black holes form? What, what's a black hole made of? Why is it black? Why doesn't it emit light? I know all these things. I, I believe I know them as good as anybody that exists right now. Because, the, like I said, standard model does not work. Electron flood theory does work. We can see these particles. We just see them divide. We see them come back together. As far as I know, nobody in physics understands this even close. They think all things are made out of big gigantic protons that just smash in like glass. No, absolutely not. They're made out of the tiniest particles, and there's just more and more and more of them make different materials. That's all. They can become stable at certain quantities and frequencies. Simple as that. And um, let's see what they have to say about this. And hopefully they'll let me react and interact. So, this is what I'm going to find out. So far, I haven't been real happy about being able to interact, but you never know. Well, I got two messages, who knows? All right, this, these look like just canned messages. Glad you're here. Have a nice day. If you have any questions, good luck. Get started and hope you enjoy the course. And I sh I'm sure I will. And this is if you have questions about course content, please contact in the forums to get help from others in the course community. That's what I'm hoping for. We'll find out. All right, as I said, I'm taking this course at the University of Alberta. They send me things, these things, just here, recommendations for you. And they know what I'm interested in. And here's all the things, statistical thermodynamics, quantum physics, cosmology, neuroscience, da, 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 particle accelerators. They know, they, they follow everything you do. And then they tell you to go here or there. And I've gone to most of these places already. Not for this. The, the, these are continuously, continuously updating their inventory of courses that you can take. And they're free. They're all free. Unless you want a degree that says a piece of paper that says you went there. Now, I would rather that you did what I am talking about. Oh, I, I do whatever you want. I'd get the piece of paper. It's $49. Basically, I think that's what they charge. $49 for a course that they will certify that you went there and I don't know what their requirements are. I don't take any tests or anything. I don't know if they have any tests. <laughs> I just go there to see what they have to say and I am 100% uh, of the time I am in disagreement with what they say because they are going to teach you on the mainstream story and that story is not the, the correct story. So I go to engage and at some point, someone will engage and we'll get things straightened out, but it's a mess now. That's not a proton. A proton is not one big ball and a couple little quarky looking things in there. It's 1,823 magnets. Each one of these is a magnet, a dipole. It has a black and a white side. At 1,823, they become stable and they don't want any more. So what does that mean? It becomes a proton, the core of a proton. Well, what does that mean? It means that anybody else wants to get in here can't get in there. What does that mean? It means they go and they try to get in, and this thing says, no, you can't get in there. And he says, I want to get in, I want to get in. He says, no, you can't. You can stay right there. That's okay. But you can't get in there. And what would this be? This would be a hydrogen. All right? Once, because they don't want any more. They're pretty well filled up at that point. Now, that's what a proton really is. And the one that's trying to get in is the same as all the ones that are in here. So there's 1823 in here and there's one more out here trying to get in. That's a hydrogen. And then when they start to get bigger and bigger and bigger, you get literally tens of thousands of particles where we thought we had 60 or 50 or 40, where there's every one of them is 1823 particles. And you take a neutron, it's 1824. So everywhere they had a proton before is 1823, and a neutron is 1824. So you have to multiply all of these neutrons and protons times the number of particles, and that's when you see how many really particles there is in that ball that constitutes these different elements. 
and there'll be a different number. They just get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And bigger. That's all it is. And one side is is has a, a what they call a a propensity, a a, a an inclination. It wants to bond with something way down here because this has seven electrons this only has one and they want to have eight all together so but but you can have five up here and three over here and all kinds of different combinations and they just they just filter into each other just like if there was two of them right here all right here's two of them all right it was just a little i'm just making them smaller but there's two of them now what happens Normally, they're going to push away from each other. But if there's just enough electrons out here and there's just enough electrons out here, they're going to hook together. This is going to say, well, if you want to come over here, you and I could get together and we'll just hang out as a ball, one hanging into the other one, and we'll float around like this. That's fine. And we may find somebody else who want to push you away, and I'll take them. And that's how, how chemistry is done. It's done with these little bitty things, not these huge particles. You, you never get anywhere with this. this you, you couldn't possibly even come close to the complexity of life with these limited number of particles. And not only that, every one of these has isotopes, which just means they have either not enough electrons or too many. And they just disregard those like they don't even exist. There's such a complexity going on here, but and this should explain why copper and things like that are so conductive and other things are so resistive and other things are so heavy in electrons and like hydrogen why is it so explosive and it's only got one proton and one electron why would it be, why how could that be so explosive i know exactly why and it's because when you spark it the hydrogen loses every single electron I mean, every single particle in here and become ex explosion like you wouldn't believe. You set off hydrogen with oxygen, and you got a bomb. And the hydrogen and oxygen is nothing more than water. But in H2O2, you're going to get a gigantic explosion and a little bit of water vapor. You want to see it? Why not? See, this, this just showed up. This is kind of unusual. This just showed up about, I've been invited to discuss Richard Mueller's paper on mass of the electrons neutrino. And that's what we're working with, these neutrinos. Just what I'm just talking about right now. Just came in 22 minutes ago. And uh, I don't follow anybody, to be honest with you. Richard Mueller, I don't know who he is, but academia thinks that it, I'd be interested based on the papers that I write on academia. I wrote a lot of papers. And just like this uh, guy, James Tour, uh, James Tour, is Dr. James Tour. He's, he's all upset at academia because they, they won't let anybody in that they don't want to get let in. And you can write all the papers you want to write. It doesn't mean anything. You get very few reads, first of all, and the people that do read it, they couldn't care less. And they probably don't understand it in the first place. Because you have to have a broad range of abilities to understand any of my papers you have to have a lot of abilities because I take it from every single different angle and there is an angle there's a plethora a whole range of ways to look at something you don't just look at here and that's it no more no no don't look that way don't look I look at here 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 and then I say ooh that all makes sense I lock it down in the middle so Maybe I'll follow this and see what he's got to say. But that's exactly what I'm talking about, electron neutrino. I'm going to jump into that paper in a second. 